Welcome. If you're watching this video, then you've probably just been set with access to ECI's Print and Easter demo site. To get you started and make sure you maximize the 30 day proof of concept period, here's a short video walking you through that setup process. So a quick run through of the agenda. Uh, these are the specific topics that we'll aim to cover today, starting with the DCA installation process and reviewing your discovered devices. And we'll take you right the way through to adding new users and creating supply trigger conditions. So let's go ahead and get underway. So when you are sent a registration email, um, you'll be sent with a link to the Printanista demo site, which is trial.printanistahub.com. Uh, you'll also have your username, which is your email, plus a one-time password that you'll want to go ahead and enter here. Now, the first time you do go ahead and get connected, it will ask you to change that upon the original login, and that will then be your stored password. At the opening screen, we'll present you with a pop-up, which you can dismiss by unchecking this box here. Um, but it basically gives you a rundown of some of the new features of Print and Easter, as well as to get started, which is kind of what today's video is going to cover. Um, obviously, this just means you don't have to read through a ton of content in order to get to that point. On the account section here, uh, what we'll have is we'll have a DCA entry registered against your new trial account that we have created for you, but nothing installed yet. So in order to get up and running, a couple of things that we will need to do. The first thing is we'll go into the settings screen on here. Um, and what you can do is you can, before you actually install it, determine how frequently you want the DCA to go out, reach out to your connected devices, pull back new data such as meter supplies, device and um, alert attributes. Under the network section, this bit's super important, the, these are the IPs that we want to scan for. So by, by default, in most cases, we'll do a broadcast all um, in here, so that we're basically just pinging the router to see what we pull back. That doesn't necessarily allow you to uncover everything, so what you might then want to do is come in here and specify the own IP ranges that you want to scan, of course, knowing the details of your network. So I'm just going to provide a couple of examples here of different IP ranges that we want to try and uncover devices for. So there's around about 550 IPs there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. When we install the DCA, it will then run a discovery against those different uh, subnets. Now, you've got a number of options. We can either go ahead and email a link out to an external user, allowing them to install the DCA on our behalf. Uh, but typically, in most cases, if you're running this as a trial, you'll probably want to go ahead and install this locally on a host machine. And just to remind you, you have got a multitude of different options here. It's not just Windows compliant, but you can also install onto a Mac, Linux, or Raspberry Pi just by hitting the download buttons underneath. And a quick walk through what this experience looks like, super quick. When we hit the download button, it's going to generate an executable file on our downloads, allowing us to then go ahead and uh, run the installer, which will then download as a Windows service and automatically start. Uh, the other alternative that you may have is to install this onto an AR data box. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the term AR data, um, please get in touch, reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you about it, but I won't spend too much time today discussing that concept. For those of you that have a demo AR data box or are interested in actually sourcing one, this is how we can then use this in tandem with the uh, Print and Easter trial. So once you connect it into your network, you're given an IP address of that AR data unit. You'll then want to go ahead and browse to it using your... Um, uh, using your browser. Up top of entered the IP and now all we're going to do is just register, register this to our Print and Easter account. So first we put in the server URL which is trial.printandeasterhub.com for me and the unique ID is going to point back to the DCA instance that we have created for the uh, respective customer, in this case our trial account. Under the install DCA window any one of these four tabs will have a unique pin. We'll want to capture that because that is specific to this instance and it tells the uh, AR data unit where the DCA should send the data to. Final thing to do is we'll just want to go ahead and set our time zone on here. I'm based out of UK, not specifically London, but that is my time zone, Greenwich Mean Time. And the reason that we set that is because there is an algorithm built into the ARD unit that will automatically restart the DCA services at 2am every night to make sure that data is constantly flowing, flowing through. When we go ahead and hit submit, it's now going to restart the DCA services. It'll take about 30 seconds and that will eventually launch us into a DCA status page uh, telling us that the DCA has been connected, registered to that account and it'll start running discovery against those IP ranges that we specified in the configurator. So just to free up a little bit of time and using the magic of video, what we're going to do is wait for the status page to load and then I'll jump forward in time once those devices have eventually pulled straight through. 
So once the DCA discovery is ran, it's then going to tell us how many devices have been pulled back um, from this audit. I can see that three different entries have been collected. Uh, the raw data is presented in this tab up here, but really the true value is the information that is presented uh, in the user interface. So if we go ahead and navigate back now, what we can see is we now have uh, an entry that has been created. And under the audit tab, it will then provide you with a list of any devices that have been pulled back as part of the, the most recent audit. If you do need to get back into that status page, you can launch a remote cloud connection service directly to it, as well as the ability to do that at an individual device level. So here are the devices that we have pulled back. Uh, before we go ahead and have a look at the information, uh, the remote device link service is accessed just here as well, so feel free to go ahead and check that out. Now, whilst you may technically be on the same network as these machines, you can get into the same page by using the IP address uh, but once you get into a real, real world situation where you're installing DCAs onto your customers networks of course you're not going to be able to access the status page because you're not on their network. So for the power of print and ESA DCA um, and for a remote cloud service connection using a reverse proxy you can actually get connected into your customer config pages at the device level to make meaningful changes and it does that via a token session as you can see here. Uh, please feel free to go and test that on a number of different devices to kind of get a feel for the experience. In terms of device data, of course, trend analysis is going to be a little bit limited, so it's only going to give us current state. It will pull through the current meter readings uh, for the device as well as give you itemized supply information. Uh, this particular device has a um, cartridge configuration already applied, so it's pulling through the part numbers, uh, the yield, and over time, once we accrue some usage on these devices, it will then be able to calculate the coverage factor as well as the ability to determine the estimated empty date based on the consumption of the toner cartridge offset against time. Time. If you need to modify any information to do with the device, you can do so in here. The pad and pen will give you the ability to be able to modify some of the informational fields as well as check mark the device to say whether it's a managed asset. And this is going to be particularly useful because you need to delineate between those devices that you provide support on versus those that are either competitor owned or have just been purchased by that customer. That will then feed into your reporting and also the ability to be able to create alert definitions specifically against your managed devices. So you're only supplying um, automated supply fulfillment for those customers on those devices that you are gaining revenue from on the click. So before we go ahead and have a look at the alerts, uh, one thing I will point out is this template view that we have over here. Uh, when you first go to the devices tab, it will pull through the default view, uh, showing supply information against a number of other metrics. On the audit view, for example, this is then totally different layout. It's then going to hide the supply information and give you line by line details of the, the devices that you're pulling back. Again, cleaning up uh, so you can actually see this more from an audit standpoint. If you did want to go ahead and create your own templates, you absolutely can do so. Um, so again, if you just wanted to use the default view as a uh, basic, but you know it's just missing a few key columns, maybe I want to display the MAC address and the IP address and make sure they sit next to the serial number, you can see how easy it is to modify the view and pull in the information that is important and relevant to you. Additionally, we can go ahead and apply filters. So maybe I only want to show my managed devices, and in this case, we're looking for the field called is managed, and we'll set the value as true. When we hit update, it now only shows me my Dell device, because remember, we checkmarked it as managed, then giving me the opportunity to store this as a custom view for me to pull back on in future, if I could type. So managed devices is going to be the template name. When we hit save, uh, we're going to overwrite an existing template that we have in our custom view now allow me to pull down the same filter, the same columns as we previously had saved so I don't have to constantly recreate this particular view. Um, next we'll go ahead and take a look at the alerting. Now under the alerts this is where any supply alerts would be triggered. Now of course this view is empty because of course we've only just started collecting data for our customer devices. Uh, we also need to actually create an alert definition to tell the system okay at what point do we want an alert to trigger when consumables hit a certain point. In order to do that, we do actually need a customer account associated with the dealer level account. So what you'll actually need to do is uh, come back to the account section. What we're going to do is create a new account. This is just going to create that association for you. So in a real world situation, you would have your dealer level account at the very top. That's you. And then underneath, you'd have your customers or, or different containers. And that is how the system knows what the dealer level is and what the customer level is going to be. So in here, we just give a generic account name. So I could call this account ABC123 and then we just start filling in some generic information in here to do with where the account is situated. There's no data validation that is actually taking place. It is just required because as you can see the bold fields this is information that we need to store against the account. 
Now what we're going to do is we're now going to add a primary contact in here um, and this could either be someone internally inside the organization that you want to add to the Printanista trial or perhaps it's uh, an external customer user who is happy to help you with this proof of concept but ultimately when you go ahead and put their details in it should recognize them as a new user and just to prove that if I type in new user ECI solutions.com doesn't recognize them when we hit search they don't exist currently so we now need to tell the system who they are um, the name new user again none of this is bold so we don't need to put this information in what we do need to define however is what permission levels we want to give them so again if it is an external user you'd want to give them power user customer or restricted depending upon the level of visibility you want to apply if it's an internal user uh, full rights would be beta revaluation uh, slightly less rights would be dealer and again uh, if you want a little bit more information about what those rights pertain to uh, please feel free to get in touch and we'll, we'll let you know what the differences are in this case, I'm going to say that it's actually an internal user, but I don't want to give them the full uh, unadulterated experience of Printanista, so we'll downgrade their permissions a little bit. And I also want to make sure that they are notified any time that a supply alert triggers, and by giving them the supplies contact role, it's going to make sure that their email address is captured as part of any triggered based alerts that are generated by the system. View hierarchy is simply if we create any further child accounts underneath this new account, uh, this user would also have visibility of those. And then from there, it's just a case of, again, like we did before, putting in the DCA instance name, because um, of course you can have multiple DCAs per account, and then popping in the IP addresses that you want to scan for. And again, I'm just going to do a broadcast all to keep it nice and quick. And this is where you come to a crossroads, either we'd download DC installer or we'd send out an installer notification email. If it's someone external, uh, this is how you can then deliver that messaging to them whilst also including the installer link as part of that email body. And that's where it's going to be contained in this variable field information here. By including the authentication token in the install link, it will be a one-click process for your new user to be able to install a DCA and connect it back into Print and Easter Hub. So we go ahead and hit finish, now we just need to wait for them to run the DCA installer on their side once they receive the email and again it's going to make a connection and send data into Print and Easter Hub. If you want to add additional contacts in here you can just come to the add contact fields and pull in the same information that we showed you previously uh, from the prior screen. Now remember because we created a new account, account ABC123, um, if I go to the devices view it's going to be blank because of course we're now looking at this from a lower level, we don't have any devices connected at that level, our devices exist in our hierarchy under new trial account, just a reminder if you want to navigate down the chain you can do so by clicking this little button here. So now we've got our child account created, we have the capability to go ahead and create our first alert definition. In here you have three opportunities, you can do consumable service or thermal, um, for today we're just going to show you consumable based alerts and now that allows me to pull in the trial account name that we created for you, uh, defined at the dealer level. Underneath we set our trigger points, so um, you've got a number of options, feel free to scroll through them, we recommend uh, in most cases as a trial use all market supplies which is all colouring colorants of tone income wax and then you can play around with the triggers maybe you want to set this based on a, a level percentage so when the toner level gets below say eight percent we want to be notified uh, we may also want to use estimated empty days as a trigger point as well so you know um, our turnaround time typically for toners is two working days so seven should be plenty enough for us to be able to receive an alert create an order and dispatch out to the customer and again, if I use a trigger preview, it will then explain in plain English what it is that we have built as part of our alerting policy. Now, you may also want to filter out some of those unmanaged devices as part of this um, trigger condition. So again, you can apply this only to your managed devices. And when we hit preview, it's now going to tell me that the only device that's going to be considered for alerting is this Dell printer uh, that we checkmarked as a managed asset. Now, I'm just going to remove that and apply it to all four devices that I currently have in view. Let's go ahead and give it a name, so I'm just going to go consumable alert definition or whatever you want to call it, it's just for informational purposes. And the final stage is once we've created our trigger, now we need our actionable behavior. Who are we going to deliver this message to? You've got a number of options, okay? You can either send it to a customer or someone internally. If we're doing this internally, we hit the crystal ball icon, it will then pull down some extended options down here where I can then define specifically who do I want to send the alert to. If it's a specific contact, we can do so by selecting their email address, or we can do a role-based alert, which then allows this to be sent out to multiple people um, based on where they sit within the organization. And remember, because we assigned our contacts the supplies contact role, anybody who is associated with an account that triggers an alert 
is going to receive this notification. Hit apply and ultimately save and that's going to store our alert definition. Now again if we go into the alert section it's going to be blank for now and that's because uh, our frequency runs roughly every 11 minutes so we'll have to come back and check in a short while to see what alerts have dropped in based off the conditions that we have set. Now before we do that, one a couple of things that I do want to just talk about very quickly. There is a reporting module in here. A lot of this does lend itself to kind of historical data, looking at trends over a period of time. Uh, particularly, for instance, the meter report, uh, that's going to be very useful once you've ran a few days of audits to understand the volumes that have been captured on the machines uh, by the DCA over the period in which you are doing the auditing for. However, if you, right now, if you do kind of want a breakdown of the different types of devices that you are monitoring, for instance, we can use our scalar chart reports in here. Um, and what this will actually show me is a breakdown of devices by manufacturer. So if I choose total number of devices by manufacturer, it's telling me that 25% of my fleet is made up by HP and 75% by Dell. With a greater subset of devices, of course, that's going to be a little bit prettier, meaningful to you to show you what the delineation of different manufacturer goods is across the fleet that, which you are auditing. And anywhere inside of Print and Easter, if I navigate to the Devices section, there is a Help button up top here. That will open the sidebar menu, allowing you to gain greater visibility into the different fields and functions that you are currently looking at. So if you're a little bit unsure as to what certain data labels mean, for instance, uh, we can actually go down to a section of this particular screen that we are looking at and it's going to provide you with some further context to help you understand okay what is the use case for that and what does that actually mean and how does it affect change. Now of course that's one way of getting information if at any point during your trial you do want further support please feel free to reach out to myself or get in touch with your account rep we would be happy to help you wherever we can during this proof of concept phase. Now again I'm just going to use the magic of video, we're going to wait for our alerts to trigger, we'll come back and we'll see what the net result of that alert condition Okay, so 11 minutes have passed and we're now back um, and let's have a look at what alerts have dropped in. Um, we can see using our active supply alerts template that we have a trigger for our cyan toner cartridge which is currently at 10% now based on our alerting policy, um, this has now generated an alert and you've got a number of options from here. If you are uh, an eAutomate user, you can push this directly into the ERP system to submit a new sales quote. Uh, if you're not an eAutomate user, don't worry because you can still deal with the alerts using this alert based module. Uh, under here I have the opportunity to go ahead and uh, suppress it and you've got a, a few options. We can either time time suppressors. So if you want the alert to go away for a little bit of time, come back, re-notify you, then these are the options that you can select. Um, ultimately, if you do want it to um, suppress until replaced, then you have the opportunity to do so. It's not going to trigger a new alert until the cartridge has been replenished and it drops below our predefined set hold next time around. You may also wish to store into the notes here if you've gone ahead and ordered the quote. So uh, you might want to put a PO number in here, um, whatever that looks like. Okay. Um, then at the bottom you just go ahead and hit save notes and we'll go ahead and suppress this until we're placed. Now what's going to happen is it's going to disappear from our active view. If you do want to see where your suppressed alerts have gone you can use in this suppressed alerts view. And in here we have not just the cyan toner cartridge but other cartridges I've also suppressed uh, previously. If you do want to pull the suppression back, maybe you submitted it, it by mistake um, and you actually haven't dealt with that toner world and you need to leave it in an, an active state, you can then clear the suppression. It then comes back, disappears from the suppress queue and is going to go back into active supply alerts where your team can then make sure they process and deal with that particular supply order. So hopefully today has been useful for you. Uh, like I say, if you have any further questions, please feel free to get in touch with myself. My name is Jamie Bradley. Um, you've probably got my contact details already. You may even have had a demo of Print and Easter itself. Um, but hopefully today has given you a good platform to have great success with the tool. Uh, like I say, you've got 30 days access to the trial. Install as many DCAs as you wish. Add as many contactors contacts as you like um, and pull back as much device data as you need to um, help you evaluate whether Print and Easter is going to be a good fit for your business moving forward.